And there are people that I've helped make millions of dollars because I got behind them. And every single one of them, every single one of them came to me without an ask. They served first. They gave back to the community. They gave back to learn. They gave back to me. They helped me. They were there. They were present. They volunteered. They gave to the foundation. One way or the other, they gave first. And they found a place in my heart. Once you have that, it's over. Game over. This is The Fighting Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to entrepreneurs looking to change the world. Learn how to start, build, and scale a business in today's highly competitive business environment. Here's your host, The Fighting Entrepreneur, Anik Singhal. What's up, you crazy fighting entrepreneurs? Welcome back to yet another episode of The Fighting Entrepreneur. And this is your host, Onyx Singhal, your favorite person in the world. And I've got a great episode today. We're going to go and do some storytelling. Again, I keep getting feedback from all of you that you love the story. So today's podcast is titled, How I Partnered with Damon John, Robert Kiyosaki, and Bob Proctor. And I'm going to give you exact stories of how it happened. I'm going to give you tons of ideas on how you can start doing this. Listen, having celebrity influencers and partnering with them has probably been one of the most impactful uh, growth hacks of my entire career. Um, and you know, once if you've done one, it's been by, it could be by mistake. It could be by accident, but when you've done them again and again, cause that's not even every, I mean, I've, 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 I've had Kevin Harrington. I mean, I could keep going. The list is huge, right? Even in the industry of just all the big people that partner with at some point, um, that it's just massive. So when you do it again and again and again, then you have to start to wonder like, okay, there has to be a method to my madness because it's just not coincidental. And so before we start, listen, are you a member of Learn Nation? Do you want to be a part of this massive mission, this movement we're creating? We're going to put over 10 million members inside of our platform online. It's free to join L U R N.com. Go right now and join and be a part of this massive movement where we are collectively together going to change the world. We're not going to lean on our governments to do it. We're going to do it together. Entrepreneurs can do way more. Okay. Way more. And the number one thing an entrepreneur needs, I'm, I've found it now, you know, it's a lonely business. The number one thing an entrepreneur needs, they need community. And that's what we're building. we got ama amazing features coming out. You got to go to learn.com and get in early L U R N.com. And listen, be part of the movement to help us attract 10 million entrepreneurs worldwide connected in one place. Can you imagine what we can do together? It's tremendous. This is why we call ourselves the home transformational home for entrepreneurs. All right. So go get yourself a membership. And if you already have a membership, go get in there get active, help people, bring people, tell other people about us. All right. Now let's talk about the topic at hand. So I'm going to give you each of the stories and they're all a little bit different and then we'll dissect kind of common elements in each of them. But I again, will say no matter what kind of business you have, what is a celebrity influencer in your space? When I say celebrity, I'm not talking about Hollywood. I'm talking about celebrities, people with a lot of influence in your niche, in your topic. How do you partner with them? How do you get in front of them? How do you get their hand over you? And I've been able to do this again and again, and there have been some common elements. So the first one that lately people have really been asking me about is Damon John. Well, this is a unique story, and it was probably one of the harder ones because it's Damon John from Shark Tank, right? He, he is probably one of the most sought after partners. And what I'm so proud of, first of all, I'm so proud of is that we partner with Damon John without going on Shark Tank right? Without having to go through the, the pitch at Shark Tank, we used, we were able to go direct. And how? First of all, usually a common element is important. So we had a friend. I have a friend, a very dear friend, John Tallarico, who knew people in the organization of Damon John. So I did luck out a little bit there, but listen, how do I know John Tallarico? I know John Tallarico because I've been building relationships for years now, for well over a decade. So through another person I knew, I met John Tallarico. This is why I tell you, build and develop relationships. Oh, I don't know if I've told you that before, but I tell you now, <laughs> okay, it's something I do all the time. Um, I know people from all over the all walks of life. My goal is to grow the number of cell phone numbers in my phone. That's how I track my network. People always say, right? It's not what you know, it's who you know. It's so true, right? Actually, I kind of feel like it's not what you know. It's not who you know. It's who you are. I always say that. But if you are the right person, you'll obviously get to know a lot more people and then you will know more people and that will lead to way more opportunity. So, um, Ever since I could go back in time, I, I, as far as I remember, I've been very good about connecting. I've always been a shy person, but face to face, I love connecting with people. And I do like to invest a lot of time into them and energy into them. I like to know more about them and I like to serve them and help them as much as possible. So that is how I was able to really nurture my relationship with John Tellerico. Although I have to say, you know, if he's listening, man, he's always done more for me than I ever have for him. But through that 
friendship with John, not business partnership, but through that friendship over years, I wanted someone to write a forward to the book Escape, right? And so I was like, once you've had Robert Kiyosaki write the forward to your book, which was Circle of Profit, where do you go from there? So I was like, uh, Damon John. Um, and I'm a big fan of his, been watching Shark Tank forever. So I called John and John said, I think I know someone there. And we reached out and that was enough to get a meeting. But as John always says it, he set the table. That's all mostly people can do for you. Even if you know someone that has a warm connection, they'll set the table. Then it's up to you. So now this is one area where I've always told people I'm lethal, all right? I'm not a sales guy. I don't come in with the suave sales techniques and challenge techniques, and I don't study any of this stuff. I'm just me, and I can be fairly lethal because I get to be me. So when I had that first call with Damon's team, I asked myself before I got on the call, Damon's got a lot of money. Damon's got a lot of fame. Damon's got a lot of influence. Damon's got a big, you know, list, a big following. What the heck do I bring to the table that will intrigue and interest Damon's team? So the more and more I thought about it, I realized, you know, his impact continues to grow. He wants to help more entrepreneurs. He wants to teach more people. He wants to do all of that. So maybe I'll lean on that. So on that very first call, I first respected their time and I said, Listen, guys, my goal here from this meeting is that I would like to get Damon John to read and write the forward to my book. And I understand that that is probably the most ridiculous and largest ask because I'm asking for Damon's most absolute, most vital asset, his time. I said, but I'm here to first start by saying this. I'm ready to put my money where my mouth is. I'm ready to put my time where my mouth is. And I would like to approach this relationship through service. What could I do for you and for Damon that would be so big, that would be so helpful, that would be so um, impactful that me asking for a little bit of Damon's time to write the forward to my book would be a small ask. This is literally how I approached the meeting. First of all, I I did tell them who we are, who I am, what I stand for. I always feel that if you can stand for something big, people want to listen. I've made sure Damon John, Robert Kiyosaki, Bob Proctor, Les Brown, Kevin Harrington, all of them, they know what I stand for. If you are around me, even if you are a big affiliate in our space, you may not be like a household name, but you're a big influencer in our space, you know what I stand for within the first few minutes of our conversation. I will always say, this is what I'm building. Learn Nation. We have 260,000 members. We will have 10 million. We are going to change the world together. We don't wait for the government to do it. We do it together. My job, my mission, who I am, it is to provide for entrepreneurs. I am the voice of entrepreneurs. I want to help entrepreneurs all over the world, not just this country, all over the world. I want to cure poverty. You know, I want to cure the underprivileged not getting an education through the power of entrepreneurship. And I tell you, when you start into that, people look at you and they think, wow, this guy is really onto something. This isn't about money. This isn't about a personal favor for him. He, he, he's, he's on a mission and people's perspective towards you completely changes. Are you on a mission? Because if you want to connect with people that have great influence, they want you to be on a mission because they have a big influence. Usually at that point, they have a big mission. So the best way to improve, the best way to impress someone with a big mission is have a bigger mission. Honestly, that's the best way to impress someone with a big mission. Have a bigger one and you get their attention. So when I had this conversation, they said, yeah, Anik, you know, um, Damon actually doesn't know anything about the online world. He's not that tapped into the online digital publishing. This is a sector he hasn't really gotten into. He'd like to learn more about that. I said, well, lo and behold, what do you know? I'm the guy that's been living it, doing it. I know everything about it. I build funnels in my sleep. I can write copy. I can do videos. I can do strategy. I can get you guys affiliates. We could do a launch. I could do whatever. I'll put it all on the table. Would that be, would that be helpful? And you could hear the silence on the other side because they're thinking, yes. So now I've found a place where I can be of service first. I can provide value first. But the biggest part is I'm providing value on something that they need, that they need badly, that I uniquely am in position to help with. And now suddenly asking for a small three page forward, it's like a tiny ask. So then we put together this plan. I said, we will do a, a, we will announce Damon. We'll do a big product launch with Damon to the entire Learn Nation database. I'll write the webinar. I'll do everything. We'll put the whole thing together. Damon and I will come film together. Damon can watch the whole process. He can ask me questions and I'll continue to help. And then after that, I'll run ads. I'll, I'll help however I can. It got to a point where I was offering like 50 times what I think they felt they were offering me at some point. And so the, the, that led to, you know, okay, send us a book. Well, who? Once you, if I have on a conversation gotten you to simply ask and tell me, okay, go ahead and send something. Boom. Bingo. I'm in. 
So I sent the book. I knew the book was awesome. I already knew that. So they took a couple of weeks, sometimes also with celebrity influence. They can take time. All right. You know, they're busy. They got stuff going on. So finally they got back to me. By the way, I have it on good. Um, I have it on good uh, merit or on th that Damon listens. So Damon, if you're listening, rock on, brother. Thank you so much for all the help you've provided with us and we'd learn. Um, and I hope nothing I've said is uh, out of line. But that's literally how I approach a conversation. I think Damon would be proud of that. And so we had a great launch. It was a good relationship. We enjoyed working with each other. I worked with Damon's team. Damon's team worked with us. We were, we were, it was awesome. That has since blossomed into a bigger relationship where now Damon has been to the Learn Center twice. We filmed together. We've hung out. We've spoken. I've gotten time with Damon that other people fight tooth and nail to get. But I did it by coming of a place of delivering service to him and his team. And I continued to live in that mode. I had a call with the president of his company just a few days ago where I said, hey, how can I help? There was no money involved, no pitching, no. I just said, how can I help? What do you guys got going on? Where can I be of service? And I genuinely mean it. Damon has done so much for Learn. I want to help. I want to give back. I want to be able to help him. And so we've brought in thousands, tens of thousands of users into Learn Nation because, because of that product launch, because Damon was involved. I get to do this podcast where I get to say, hey, I've done projects with Damon John. I have pictures with him, videos with him. That's so cool. Well, how many of us dream for that, right? Huge service. So, um, so that's a big part of how I approach these relationships. So that was how the Damon John relationship got approached. And it was pretty powerful because it was a, through a place of uh, through a place of service. Now let's look at Robert Kiyosaki. How did I connect with Robert Kiyosaki? Well, that one's a little bit different. That one was a little bit more, uh, let's say competitive. We took a different approach there. So there was a product launch happening by a company in our industry years ago. And look, man, when it comes to launches, I take a lot of pride. I used to be, I don't do them anymore, but I used to be, I would say top three, top two. I know how to do a launch. Like I understand the psychology of a launch. I understand how to put together a launch. I've done biggest one. I've done big ones. My biggest one, $11.6 million. It's not the biggest in the industry by any means, but that's pretty damn big. All right. And to process $11.6 million in a less than two weeks, that's pretty impressive. Um, and I used to participate in other people's launches, right? So I would be the affiliate for them. And I would always come in number one, number two, number three, max. And if I came in number two or number three, it was always to someone who was amazing, but from my industry, someone who knew my stuff, someone who knew something better than me. But all of a sudden during this product launch, I see a name pop up on the leaderboard kicking my butt. And his name is Robert Kiyosaki. I almost fainted. I said, how did they get Robert Kiyosaki to promote? Robert Kiyosaki is a childhood idol. This is the guy that made me. This, his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is the reason I'm sitting in front of you right now or talking to you. Changed my life, changed the way I think, changed everything. He still takes me to school. Every time I see him, every time I meet him, I walk away, I'm like, whoa, right? So all of a sudden I thought, childhood idol, I'm a competitive person. I love Robert, but I ain't letting them beat me. Not in my game, not in my industry, uh-uh. So we started fighting tooth and nail and it's hard, man. This is a man with massive influence, a big list. So we start fighting. Turns out, I find out later that on their side, his two marketing heads were like, who the heck is this kid? Why? Because we start going like one, two, two, like what we were like one above one another all the time, bouncing up and down. Man, I remember up until the last day. I'll tell you this funny story. The launch is ending. It was Friday night. The launch ends at midnight and we are still going whoosh, whoosh, like flipping back and forth, right? I, I had to go to a Russell Peters concert and I wasn't going to miss it. I wanted to see him. My wife was super excited about it, but I wanted to win this damn thing. So the whole time we're driving to DC, I'm on the phone talking to my team. What's that? Hit, hit, hit refresh. What's going on? Hit refresh. What's going on? And it was like four hours to go and we were, we were behind and we messaged the company that's running the launch. And they're like, oh, you guys are like 20 sales behind. I'm probably lying to us. We're probably like three behind. It was a good technique though. So 20 behind, we're like, duh. So one of my, one of, one of our team members is like, look, it was a good fight. Let it go. And I thought, let it go. Are you, I'm the fighting entrepreneur. Uh-uh. So while I'm walking into the Russell Peters concert, I call my team and said, throw a new bonus, send six more emails, announce the bonus. Let's get on it. We got three hours. Well, you know what? In the last hour we pulled ahead. So it was really cool. We pulled ahead and we won. Now, you know, they gave us a fight for our, they gave us really, they gave us a run for our money. Okay. But two days later, our marketing director back then, Dan Lehman. Now he's Dan Lehman. Dan's a funny guy, right? Dan's just, he, he doesn't care. Like he likes to have fun. So he asked me like, can I contact them? I said, man, they're not going to care. They don't want to talk to us. We're, I'm just on it. That's Robert Kiyosaki. Dan's like, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to listen to you. So he sent an email to them literally saying nanny, nanny, boo, boo. That was the email. He's like, ha ha, beat you. Now, as luck would have it, 
the two guys that got the email at Robert Kiyosaki's company, their names are Rob and Greg, and they listen to this podcast as well. What's up, guys? Love you to death. There's two of the best people I've ever met. Loved working with them since then. Turns out they happen to have a sense of humor that appreciates a nanny nanny boo boo email. Right now, that could have gone the other way, but in this case, it went well. And all of a sudden, they reply. They say, "Who are you? What are you? Let's meet." And next thing I know, within a week, here's what I did. Here's a technique. Here's a strategy I used. I've never told other people. I've never said I ever did this. They, they don't even know this. So um, they Dan loops me in on the email and says, "Hey, Onik, um, they they want to talk. They wanted to talk on the phone." I don't want to talk on the phone. I want to get my foot in that door. Are you kidding me? Robert Kiyosaki, what we could do together, it's huge. I just want to shake the hand, shake the man's hand. Child at Idol, give me an autograph, something. I've got complete starstruck on me when it comes to him because the guy changed my life. So I came up with a sneaky strategy that I've used many times, by the way, <clears throat> and I'll still use many times in the future in case I do. You didn't hear this on the podcast. Just so it turns out, oh, Rob and Greg, you guys are in Phoenix, Arizona, Scottsdale. Scottsdale, Arizona. They're like, yeah. I said, man, I'm going to be there next week. As it so turns out, turn of life events, I will be in Scottsdale next week. I wasn't going to be in no Scottsdale next week. I had no plans of being there, but I could have plans. Book a flight. It ain't hard. I was like, can I stop by? Why, why do a phone call when we can meet face to face? And they're like, yeah. They don't know this, by the way. If they're listening. They're totally chuckling. They have no idea I did this. So they're like, yeah, come on by. I'm like, sweet. So what did I do? I booked the damn flight. I booked the hotel and I went out there. What are you coming out here for? Oh, a couple of business meetings. Like, don't worry about that. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about us. So I end up in their office. Go in. We end up having a great two, three hour meeting. Robert Kiyosaki was not there though. So I was like, cause now I walked in. I'm like, so is he around? But he wasn't. We ended up really hitting it off. And I asked them, I said, guys, I want to do more. Well, let's do more stuff together. They said, I love it. We would love it. We love your marketing. We love your stuff. We research you. Let's do more stuff together. So now I had to be of a place of service. What could I do that can make them look, see, now look, listen, uh-uh. You've got to know who you're talking to. You've got to know your audience and you've got to pivot your, what, how you are of service depends on who you're talking to. Now I'm not talking to Robert Kiyosaki. I'm talking to a couple of cool guys that run all of his company for him. So what's in it for them, right? If I make a bunch of money for the company, I don't know how much of that money ends up in their pocket, but I do know that if I make a bunch of money for the company and they get to take the credit for it, that's definitely got to help them. It's got to give them a bigger bonus, got to make them more money. It's got to make them look good in the company. So how can I help them look like heroes? What deal can I put forth? What deal could I put together that would make them look damn good? That's going to be my pitch to them. And that's exactly what it was. And we ended up putting something together that was amazing. Since then, man, Robert Kiyosaki, if you're listening, you have just brought deca millions in value to this community at Learn. You have just been a blessing amongst blessings. One of the best things that ever happened to Learn was me lying that I had something to do in Scottsdale or Dan's nanny nanny boo boo email because I told him not to email paradigm. I had a small, small thinking, small thinking could have, could have completely, I mean, if it was up to me, I would have never met this whole thing with Robert would never exist. How crazy is that? Right? One email, one email changed the course of the future of my life, of the company, of our students. How many students have we brought in? Who's Rosalie one to, comes to mind, quit her job, making multiple six figures, living the life of a mompreneur. She came from the Robert Kiyosaki camp. She would maybe have not ever lived this life. She lives now. It had it not been because Dan sent an email. It's crazy, 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 crazy what life can bring. But again, be a place of service. That's how I approached that. That's how I met uh, Robert Kiyosaki, became business partners with Robert Kiyosaki. Now, last but not least, uh, for this particular podcast, Bob Proctor. Now, that, that's a crazy one, and it's a different story. So, But it continues to highlight the power and importance of networking, getting out there, doing things, talking to people, emailing people, t calling people, all that. So I used to go to a lot of marketing events, all right? I used to go to a ton of these little masterminds and stuff. I don't do as much anymore, which is a, which is a mistake. I need, to be get, I need to get back out there. I need to travel more, which I am now. I'm speaking more now too, starting like now, thanks to the uh, experience in Toronto, which I spoke about on the podcast. So I used to go to these little events all the time, and I swear every event was just guys, always. It was like a room of 30 people, 29 guys. What about the one? It was always Sonia Riccati, like always Sonia Riccati, right? So I, you get to become friends with her. First of all, she's damn cool. Second of all, she 
she she challenges you so she would she raised her hand you know people she she would put people to place like so i i was a big fan of hers and we ended up hanging out a few times i got to know her at these things so i went to this event called awesomeness fest by mind valley it was in mexico in an all-inclusive resort with zero intention of ever walking a foot into the event i just wanted to take a vacation to mexico so jimmy ceo of San lane and i we went together um and we were like oh, let's go to mexico and so we hung out and the first night we get there we're hungry and we walk into the cafeteria. By the way, I'm starting to look around the place. Like the cafeteria is full of people that are there from the event. I don't know anybody because Mind Valley is in more of a spiritual development market. I wasn't. I didn't know anybody. I'm like, man, I don't know anybody here. And I'm sitting there. We're ready to eat. And all of a sudden I hear Onik and I turn around. And it's Sonia. I'm like, oh, thank God. One person I know. I'm like, Sonia, what's up? So she's sitting next to a gentleman and she says, Brian, meet Onik. Onik, Brian Proctor. And of course, now my second childhood idol, right, a soft, soft, close behind second to Robert Kiyosaki's Bob Proctor. Maybe right up there, man. He's changed my life too. Paradigms, I mean, taught me how to change my paradigms. It's just huge. I, I, I have binged watched Bob so many nights. I can't, even, I, I don't even know what to say. When YouTube was invented, it was like Bob Proctor was, you know, secret, you know, all that stuff. So anyway, so of course, whenever we hear that and we hear the same last name, we always want to ask and we're like, any relation to... And I asked with zero intention or thought that it would ever come true. And I was like, eh, zero, in yeah. you know, I was like, any relation to Bob Proctor? And Brian looks and goes, yeah, that's my dad. I was like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? And so I sat down right next to him. We started talking. And again, I'm being myself. Listen, the reason people usually like me, I'm very blessed with one thing. And that is in the industry. I hear this all the time for a lot of the people, the higher ups in the industry, the influencers, they always say, you know, Anik, you're one of the few people that we never hear anything bad about. Usually all the top marketers, top gurus have been around for 15, 16 years. They've got drama. They've wronged people. There's bad stuff out there. It's not about me because I'm just not that way. Like I'm a good person. Genuinely, I'm a good guy. And when I sit with you and I talk to you, I'm a good person. I'm into you. I ask you questions. I try to find out how I can help you and it's hang out. I don't come right running after you asking for stuff. So uh, Brian and I end up chatting. We, we had a good talk that night. He was asking me my story. I was asking him about him. Of course, I was like, what's it like to be Bob Proctor's son? That's going to be a whole nother world. And then like every day for that event, Brian and I would hang out. And then the last day at the event, I was, I just told him as a joke, I, but I kind of didn't say it as a joke. I kind of was dropping it out there. Like I knew what I was doing. I was like, Brian is a dream of mine to meet Bob one day. Maybe if you could tell me like what event or whatever he'll be at, I just want to shake his hand, say thank you. And Brian turns around and says, well, what are you doing next month? I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, come over, come over. He's like, yeah, come to Canada and you can hang out with my dad. I'll, I'll, I'll find a day for you to go hang out at his house. Like, have you lost what? I'm like, have you lost your mind? I'm gonna go hang out at Bob Proctor's house. He's like, yeah, it's totally cool. Like, I'll work it out. I said, okay. So when I left, of course, I followed up, and sure enough, a month later, he, I, I don't know what the heck happened. I'm sitting a series of events. I'm sitting in Bob Proctor's home, having lunch. He took me out to lunch to his favorite lunch place. We're hanging out in his backyard. We're talking shop. We're talking life. We're talking personal development. It was completely uncanny. It was just weird. I'm like, where did this happen? And again, like I said, if it happens once by mistake, it's a coincidence. If it happens again and again and again to you, it's by design. The reason is because I focused hard on establishing my relationship with Brian. And it, honestly, Brian is so amazing. He's such an awesome person. It didn't take much. I just, we hit it off. I just became friends with him. So whether that meant he would let, send me into Bob Proctor's house or not, didn't matter. I liked Brian. I hung out with him. I talked to him, spoke to him. That relationship is what led me to then into Bob Proctor's house. Now, when we're at Bob Proctor's house, I was my mission, my goal to be like, hey, Bob, I got a big personal development product launch coming. Man, it would be awesome if I could get your support. So again, I didn't lead with that. I spent time in Bob's house. We hung out for hours. We had lunch together. We spoke. I again said, how can I be of service? How can I help you? How can I help your company? And finally, I was just like, oh, Bob, by the way, do you know any people I should talk to? I have a big personal development product launch coming out. I'm really excited about it. It's my first one ever. I just want to connect with more people in the industry. I didn't even think for the life of me that he would offer to promote. Part of me hoped. I was laying the thing out, but I didn't expect it. He looks, he's like, you know what? Everything I've heard from you, is that in your course? All the stuff you've told me, all your theories and all the way you work throughout the day? I'm like, yeah, that's what the whole course is about. He said, kid, I want to get behind that. I want to help you. More people need to learn this stuff. Turns out the guy goes on to do millions of dollars in sales with with us. We've we've made millions together years after that. 
all because I put myself out there. I'm out there meeting people. Everyone I meet, I treat really well, even if I don't think there's anything in it for me. I establish relationships. I get them into my phone. I follow up with them. And at some point when I want something, I'm I'm daring enough to just ask, except for the case of Robert Kiyosaki, that's on Dan. Dan helped me out with that. He's the one who asked. And there you go, lo and behold. But the key things here to take away are, I always come from a place of service. How can I serve you? How can I help you? How can I do something for you? I'm always about relationship building. And this week, we're gonna be hearing an episode from Roland Frazier that just takes this to the next level where he's made millions of dollars and he helps people all over the world for free for free. He doesn't charge consulting hours at all. He should. The guy is a brilliant genius and you'll hear it in the episode on Wednesday, but he does it on purpose and he makes way more money. He says he makes millions more because he gives us time and energy away for free. So I can actually relate. I, everyone I've met, every relationship I've had, every door I've walked into has been because I'm just a good person. And I ask, but I'm strategic. Look, I do little sneaky things like I'm going to be in Scottsdale. Happens to be next week. Happens to be tomorrow. What are you doing? And then I book a flight. But I'm daring enough to do these things. Guys, you got to step out. you got to do. you got to get creative. And remember one thing. There's no replacement for face-to-face. -face. There just isn't. Get in front of someone as much as you can. And now I'll just I'll kind of end the podcast episode with this. There are a lot of people that I've been able to help too. I like to consider myself an influencer in this space. I've built quite a reputation, quite a list. I'm blessed. Thank you very much for the trust you give me. And there are people that I've helped make millions of dollars because I got behind them. And every single one of them, every single one of them came to me without an ask. They served first. They gave back to the community. They gave back to learn. They gave back to me. They helped me. They were there. They were present. They volunteered. They gave to the foundation. One way or the other, they gave first. And they found a place in my heart. Once you have that, it's over. Game over right? So I can talk from the other side and I can tell you it works. So how can you be of service? How can you get in front of? Roland will talk about this too because Roland buys his way in. I do it now too. If there's someone I really want to meet, right now I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn real estate investment. Um, literally in a week, I, I just bought tickets to go to an event from what I, who I believe is the number one person teaching the kind of investment I want to learn. And the tickets are not that expensive. And I already know that at the event, they're going to sell something. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be like 20, 30, 40 grand. I already know it. I know it's coming. And you know what? Let's bring it on. I'm ready. You know why I'll buy it? Because I want access. I want to get in front of that person. Because when I get in front of that person, I promise you, I'm going to make millions with that person. The 20, 30 grand is going to be a joke. I've been doing this again and again in my life. So my question to you is, are you willing to get in front of somebody? Are you willing to serve somebody? And are you willing to serve them for months, if not years at times, before you get anything back in return? That, ladies and gentlemen, is the true formula to getting in front of celebrity influencers and having a massive impact on your company. So there you go. Listen, if you've been listening, go to onicpodcast.com, leave us a great review on iTunes, and make sure if you're watching on YouTube, come on, leave me a comment, click subscribe, click the bell thingy, click uh, thumbs up, leave me a comment and read them all. Tell me what you think. What's Who is the next celebrity influencer that you wanna go after who can make a big impact on your business and what's your approach how are you going to do it make sure you join us at learn.com l-u-r-n join the movement the movement to 10 million it's happening be a part of it help us out let's change the world let's do it together let's make this world a better place let's cure poverty let's cure you know sickness let's do it all together entrepreneurs sticking together we can do it this is onyx and God reminding you when life pushes you stand straight smile and push it the heck back i will see you on the next episode Thanks for listening to The Fighting Entrepreneur with your host, Onyx Singhal.